<clears throat> right, the video I'm going to start making today is me making a, a, a Nanban, Nanban pot. Nanban pots are, are great for rough textures, trees. This this particular one I've uh, I've made for a for a customer, and this is going to have a black pine in it. Really nice, uh, literati black pine in it. This is all coil built. You can see on the inside. There's no throwing marks at all. It's all built up in little sections. I put feet on it. It's got holes in the base. So that is the pot. So that's what I'm going to make today. Well, I'm going to start making today. It'll probably take me three or four days to make it. They come in various shapes and sizes. Nambans cover a vast amount of pots. Primitive pots of all shapes and sizes. This is another one. This is slightly smaller than this one. Is smaller again. They all follow a similar sort of theme though. This is one I made that's got a much rougher rim. Also no, no feet on this. I do these little indents on the bottom to put the holes in so that's that's got no feet that's a footless one. But a really really nice sort of heavily textured rim. So that is the project for this for this uh, for this next video. The weather at the moment is very cold, it's very damp, so the clay is drying really, really slowly. I'm saying it might take me three or four days to make it. It might take the best part of a week, maybe longer, depending on the drying. You can't force these things. If you force dry them, they will crack, and we don't want them to crack. So that's the next project. So we'll see how we get on. So I'll see you in the pottery. So this is a slab I made a little bit earlier, so this is going to be the base of the pot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to transfer that onto this board, sit the board on top of it, and just flip it onto the board. But still a little bit damp, so it might stick a bit. That's not too bad. So now I'm going to cut my circle from this. So I'm going to come across the turntable. get comfortable. When you click in a circle you want to make sure that your board is as close to the centre of the turntable as possible otherwise you end up with off-centred circles, a lot of waste of clay. Uh, at the moment I'm just going to mark it up. So I'm marking, this is where my circle is going to be. It's just a rough circle and then I've got a guide that I can actually cut to. And I'm going to cut this through And this is going to be the base of my pot. I'm not worried about little bits like that, I'll just fill that in later. So that's the base, that's ready. Right. So I'm going to make this pot from coils and I'm going to I'm going to extrude these coils. You can hand roll them, but they're quite long coils and they're quite thick coils, and it's a lot of hard work, and I'd, I'd sooner do it this way. So this is what I'm going to use. This is a standard extruder die and that's the hole I'm going to use. That's a one inch hole and to, to blank off the other holes I have this useful bit of sort of rubber that just blanks off the other holes. So I'm going to put this in the extruder which is across here. So that goes into the extruder and it gets clamped into position. Right. So that's ready to go. That's all ready to go. Right, so this is the clay I'm going to use. This is a standard crank. It's quite a rough body. It's an open body. It's got a lot of what they call sort of grog in it, which is like pre-fired material. Cuts down on the shrinkage, cuts down on the warpage. Makes it perfect for this sort of pot. I'm going to use it straight from the bag. I'm not going to wedge it, I'm not going to prepare it. I'm going to cut it into slabs, which are then knock it to lumps. And this goes straight into the extruder. And that's ready to go. Right, so this is just a, a standard heavy duty extruder. And what this does, you get this piston into the barrel, 
put a lot of pressure on this end and it pumps out a coil. And there comes your coil. That's a one inch coil. Takes quite a bit of strength. I'll put the touch down. Grab this. Grab this. Put this on the board. And that's just about the length I want. That piece of string is the circumference of this pot. So that should be just about right. So we've got number one. I'll try and get another one. Now this one's shorter, unfortunately, but we'll see how we get on. It might be all right. It's not too far off. I might use this one first. So I'm going to make four coils. So I'm going to put more clay in and make more coils. So you can you feel me? Right, so these are the coils I'm going to use. Not a bit on the thick side. But what I'm going to do before I use them on the pot, I'm actually going to flatten them. So they'll come out more like the sort of nano slabs. They don't need to be this thickness. I mean, if you build a pot from coils this thick, it's going to be so heavy and unusable. It would be, uh, it'd be a bit silly really. Right, we're going to prepare this base now to accept some coils. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cross hatch the, uh, the ring around the outside of this, this slab. I use, I use one of these, this is a, uh, a texturing tool. It's great for cross hatching. And you just dig into it and really rake your surface up. All the way around. And you see that's well that's well chewed up. That should give you a really good key when you come to put your coil on. And I'm going to slurry this at this stage. Probably be better off with a bigger brush, but I haven't got one, so I'll make the best of it. I'm putting this slurry on early so it can start working on the surface of the clay and just moisten it down a little bit. I mean you can put it on just before you put the coil on but, but this just gives it a little bit of time to uh, to do a bit of work and that will sit there quite happily that until we come to use it. Right. And make sure you've got every last little bit. So I'm going to use this shorter coil first just to see what it's like. So this is round at the moment so what I'm going to do I'm just going to use the palm of my hand and I'm just going to flatten this off. You see you end up with a thinner slab. Makes it harder to handle but and this is what we're going to build the pot from. Right, now I'm going to put this on the pot. I'm going to rest it on that board to take the, some of the weight off it and I'm going to start feeding it in. To the pot and nip it off there. That went a lot better than I expected. And sometimes with the bigger pots it's a it's a lot harder than that and a lot more difficult to control. I'm just making sure that this is well in contact with the, with the base of the pot with the slab on the bottom. I'm going to use my little cutty tool to cut that. Take that bit away. Bit of slurry. Stick these together. Right. Get it in a good position so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just sealing these in and just making sure that the the well attached at the bottom. And then I'm going to use this rubber kidney to just work around and make sure that everything is in position as it should be. This also helps to keep your walls coming up nice and straight. Right. 
Get it all down on the inside. do for this bit is I'm just going to put a little reinforcing coil around this this part of the base. Just a short coil of clay. You're going to make sure you get your hand on the outside while you're doing this. If you don't have your hand there you're just going to push the coils off. So keep your hand in position and just feed this in. At certain points of the video you'll notice that it's been sped up. I've done this really just to cut down on the length of the video. It can be a bit long. I hope this doesn't distract. And that's got that done. And make sure that that's nicely smoothed off and in position. Okay, I'm happy with that. Coil number one. Just checking the profile, making sure it's coming as straight as I want it to do. The more your time you take of putting these coils on, the better chance you've got of them actually staying there, not cracking. That's all right, happy with that. Right, next bit, back to your old serrated tool again. Just spin this around and just mash up the surface a little bit. And again, I'm going to put my slurry on early. It's a long way around on these pots sometimes. Right, let's just do a little bit of work. Do another coil. Second coil. We know the first coil was just a little bit too long, so we'll take that off. And again, just flatten the slabs down. this in. You need very long arms when you're doing this job. Right, so we'll just cut that through. Come off. these in position. While I'm doing this I'm gripping the bottom coil with the finger and thumb of my left hand and I'm pushing the top coil down with the finger and the thumb of my right hand just to get a good a good seal. You see a lot of potters sort of thumbing it in as they go around thumb thumb thumb. I'm not sure that's that's easy to do with sort of the uh, the size slabs that I'm using. If you've got big rolls of clay it's quite easy to feed it in and you can build your pot up. And with smaller coils it's not that easy. And I've lost my tool again. So back to this. Make sure it's all down in position and then I'm going to start raking these together as you can see again I've, I've spread the film what I'm doing during this section is I'm just melding these coils into each other uh, I'm using a rubber kidney to actually scrape the clay 
across both coils and, and create a seal both inside and outside. One more coil on this, that should give us a good height. Right, so that's got three coil slab, whatever you want to call them, on it. So that's got to the height I want it now. So I'm going to let that set for a few hours before I move on to the next process. You see it's built quite nicely, the rim's still quite even. The inside needs tidying up, but I'll get to that. But I'm going to shape this at some point, this is not its final shape. I'm going to put one more coil around this, around the top, to give me a rim, which will be a thinner coil. And then finish the, the rim off, and then, then shape it. And then we'll come to that later when it's dried a little bit. But you can see, it builds quite well. It's not my favourite activity, coiling. But, uh, but doing it this way makes it a bit more enjoyable. Right. So what I'm doing, I'm going to put another coil on this, but I'm not going to put it on the top. I'm going to put it on the side here. I've already cross-hatched and I've already sort of put some slurry on. And I've got my next coil ready to go. It's a much thinner coil. These were one inch coils. This is a three quarters inch coil, but I've still flattened it. And I'm now going to apply it to this part of the pot with a bit of luck, it should go on quite nicely. So, this is the coil, and I'm just going to place it in position as we go around. Hopefully, it's going to be long enough. It is going to be long enough. And I'll do a quick overlap. About there. Quick cut with this tool. This tool in the workshop. We'll get the dog for the walk. Oh, sorry. Right, so I must make sure that that's on and there's no air trapped. in position where you want it. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. That went on a lot lot better than I expected. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to smooth the top of this coil into the top of that coil. Once I've got it as I want it. Right. Quite happy with that. So I'm just gonna just gonna run it in. So I'm gonna run it in around this top edge. You get the camera slightly above it, you'll you'll just see it going in. There you go. Well, 
all the way around. See, I'm wrong way around the top of this pot at times, but. I'm just going to put a little bit of shape into this as I'm working. You probably just heard our dogs barking in the background, they'll be wondering where we are. Right. So I'm just going to work this in. Again, we're back to speedy film, but at this stage, what I'm doing, you know, just smoothing the rim, trying to get a bit of shape into it, making sure it's fully in contact with the with the sort of base pot behind it. It's a little bit tedious watching this if you sort of do it at normal speed. So I've just sped it up a little bit, but as you can see, I'm I'm just working my way all the way around the outside of the rim and trying to get a little bit of shape into it. I'm just going to put a little bit of shape into this part of the pot, this part, it's a little bit sort of straight, I want it more more curved, more flared, so I'm going to start from the inside, I'm going to pull this out. All the time I'm doing this I'm sort of looking down this profile of the pot just to see what it's doing. That is pretty much the shaping done on this. Uh, it's still quite soft. And if you do too much to it, it's going to start thinking about collapsing. So you need it to stiffen up a little bit. But a couple of things I do need to do on it before I, before I move on. Is I'm going to put one or two indents in it. I'm going to put one in there. I'm going to put one in there. I might even put another one in. I'm not sure. I'll see what these two look like first. Right, so we'll do that. Do that now. Play with them tomorrow and make them a bit more pronounced. It'll stay where I put it. So that's today's progress. I'm quite happy with that. I don't like the way that's sagging, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So I'm going to leave that to set overnight. And then we'll come back tomorrow and we'll do a lot of tidy up on it. And make it look better. 
I want to texture all this area. I really want to sort of rip that up using a tool. This has got a lot of grog in it. There's a lot of grit in it. And as you pull a metal tool across that, it rakes that grit through the clay and it leaves really quite a nice texture. So I want to work on that. So far so good. It's all right. See you tomorrow. carving on this I thought that this sort of neck was a little bit too thick so I'm just going to cut it away a little bit I'm just going to do a little bit more to there and uh, I'm just going to find that rim a little bit more I'm using a, a metal kidney it's just a standard metal kidney and what I do is I'm just getting up there underneath that neck and I'm just digging out some of that clay dominating the pot really and I don't want it to do that so I'm just going to find that thumb mark a little bit just to make it look a little bit clearer again there's still a lot of tidying up to be done on this I'm just going to get this this neck sorted out Yesterday I put two indents in, I did two, two indents like this, I put one at that side and I put one at this side, I removed this one because I didn't like it, so I, so I took it out, it might go back in again yet, I don't know, so yeah, I'm just refining this, this neck. Every time you're doing this, you're adding sort of texture and pop. And it fills up layers of texture, which look great when you come to finish it off or put the oxides on to finish it off. Oh, I'm a lot happier with that. that makes me happy. Get rid of that out of there. It was too thick, it was this deep, it was this deep and it was just too much so we're reducing it by, by I don't know, two thirds or 50% or whatever. We will get into mistakes. Right, happy about that now. Right, I'm just going to do a little bit more shaping on this side. I'm just going to start getting to the point where I can't move it any further. If you try and move it, you're just going to crack it. I want to get all the shaping done at this stage really. You can't get it on that. It's building up nice there. Right, I'm just going to sort this room out a little bit. I'm just going to drag this tool across it. Just Get a little bit of texture into it. And also on this, this top bit. soft for this really. I want to get some of this clay off while it's cuttable and we'll play with it again tomorrow probably. Yeah. 
Igen. Megépjed. I'll leave it at that until tomorrow. That's fine. That's uh, very pleasing. Right, this is the piece of kit I use to make the feet. It's just a handheld extruder. It's got a die in the end, it's got a, a square hole. It actually, it's got two square holes. I only want to use the bigger one, so when I'm using this, I have to keep my finger over that. You can block these off. But it's a pain, so I just I just tend to put my finger over the end, and it's just got a handle at this end that you that you pump. You can buy these from most pottery suppliers. So to use this, it's just a case of finger over the end and squeeze, and it gives you the section that you need for the feet. Just a little bit more. Again, keeping your finger over the end of that hole. So these are the feet. What I tend to do with these to get them straight is to put a stick up against the back of them. Just run my finger along. And that straightens them up. Same with that. I always make these in advance and then they've got a little bit of time to sort of dry and stiffen. You don't want to be putting these on too soft. So I'll, I'll leave these for about half an hour before I put them on. Right, so I'm pre preparing this for the, uh, for the feet. And one thing I do before I put the feet in, I cut the holes. I cut the big holes, the little holes I can cut later, but the big holes I need, I cut now. I run a stick pretty much across the, the radius of the pot. And this is a, just a metal tool, run it down from that stick. And it leaves a mark. And you can see the gauge where your holes need to be. And I cut the holes just using a, an old bit of tube. This is going to have three holes in it. There's going to have one there, so I'll push and cut. There's going to have one there, push and cut. And it's going to have one in the middle somewhere. About there. So that's the holes cut. Now dried enough for us to put the feet on. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it and look at the base. I've already cut the holes, so, so this is what we're looking at. That's nice, that's a nice base. Just want to tidy this up a little bit. Just at the kidney and just get rid of that. that flange around the base. Okay. And now we've got to try and work out how big the feet need to be. So there's going to be four feet. I'm going to be putting one there, there, there and there. Just to, just to follow the line of these, these holes. And I think looking at this, they probably need to be... about that length. I need them to support the whole of the pot. I mean, the problem you've got with a big pot like this is you put small feet on and this thing gets up to temperature the clay gets soft as it gets hotter and they can sag on the feet so if you put small feet on like that and you put another one there the chances are that that part of the pot will sag and we don't want that we want to support it as much as we can so i'm thinking we need feet that size yeah i think that should do So I've calculated that's approximately the length of the foot that I need. So we need four of these. And I'll just cut it off in section. This clay's dried a little bit, which is nice. And that 
that's the four feet. So I'm going to bring these across to the pot. So I'm going to have one of these feet here. So see that's got plenty of support. If this does go, when this gets up to temperature, these feet are going to hold it. That's not going to sag. And that's what you want. You want plenty of sort of plenty of support. So that's where the feet are going to go. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to apply these feet. Got them all spaced out. I know exactly where they're going to go. So now I need to put some marks on. These are just little registration marks. I'll put one at each side of each foot. And we'll start with this one. So you can see the two marks. This has got to be cross hatched. When I was cross, when I was cross hatching on the pot, I used the brush. And the brush gave me enough tooth. This is a little bit harder. So what I want to do, I really want to cut into it. So I'm going to use a knife to cross hatch this. And it's just a case of getting in and giving it a damn good ray cut. It's really essential that you do this with these feet. Because they will, they will come off. slurry paint this on I always put on more than I need I want these things to stick take the foot sit it on that slurry get it in position and then I press it down with my fingers and the last thing I do I just give it a jiggle just to make sure it's got a bit of a key and it's well in position and that's stuck and that shouldn't go anywhere right I'm just going to go through the others quite quickly the last foot on So this is the last foot. I didn't video putting the other two on. Uh, yeah, in position, good jiggle. There's the feet. They're on. They look nice. Right. And then the last thing I do with my feet, just to make sure that the well stuck and there's an aesthetic thing as well I just flatten the ends off and I've got my trusty piece of stick for that you find that you put the pottery tools you make a lot of your own pottery tools and you have your favorite pieces for your various jobs and this is just a standard piece of wood it just allows me to sort of finish these corners off nicely I'm just flattening them down. There you go. So they're on. I'm just going to leave them to set. Lovely. Right, so I'm just going to put some tie holes into this. There's going to have plenty. I don't know what size tree is going to go in this, but these are good, good anchor points for it.
should do you. Very last job on this one, on the base of this one anyway, is the mark. This is a little bit of clay, which I make into a badge or a disc. And this is my mark, this is my potter's mark, known as chops. I press that into that little badge. You can see that's the uh, impression. Finding the appropriate space to put it. Good cross hatch. There's a gunge. Put the chop on. And that is pretty much it. That is pretty much the pot finished. At this stage, that's the building done. I'll wait while these these feet have set, probably tomorrow morning. And I'll turn it back over. And uh, a few final touches. Don't need much because it's it's quite good. The texture's quite good on it. It's not focused if you get too close. That's lovely. There you go. I really enjoyed making that. I hope you've enjoyed watching it being made. Uh, I don't think there's anything I can tell you about it really. It's just got to be dried and fired. It'll take ages for this to dry. It'll take weeks, two weeks, three weeks. I don't think I'll do anything else to it. The texture's good. Oh, you can see all the way around it's uh, it's going to take the oxides really, really nice. Right, well thank you for watching.